now Judy will get to engage uh, the Minister of Gender, uh, Victoria Kalima, and uh, she will be talking to her via the phone. Judy. Thank you so much, Kenneth. Uh, good morning, uh, Honorable Minister. How are you? Okay, let's uh, first start with uh, our issue, firstly, of discussion is uh, the revision of the Marriage Act. Now, we just want to find out, why is uh, this revision necessary? Um, this, uh, uh, the revision on the Marriage Act is uh, basically to uh, ensure that uh, we bring development in the nation. And uh, development cannot be separated from education. And development cannot be separated from gender equality. And so after um, a number of, uh, you know, um, studies, we've, it's been discovered that a number of women in this country are level. And so we want to ensure that most of these girls get educated up to college level and university level. Because if we educate the girl child, then we are going to achieve the 50-50% gender parity that we are talking about in the Constitution. And so uh, we've been having a number of consultations, and the consultations were done. And uh, so the marriage uh, bill is uh, sitting in the uh, Ministry of Justice so that when it's concluded, it can go to Parliament. Okay. We've had uh, some comments from our viewers and also uh, a child activist who are talking about um, uh, this bill, this act, versus um, strengthening campaigns against early marriages. Some people are saying maybe we take the route of strengthening early marriages. Your take on that? Strengthening early marriages or discouraging Stren early marriages? Strengthening the campaign against early marriages. Oh, we strengthen the campaign against early marriages. Yes. Um, well, the proposal, let me, we are doing that. Yes, we are creating a lot of awareness. As you are aware, mostly in the villages, most of the girls are married off at the age of 15 years old. You know, even some of them to the extent of getting married at the age of 13. And so as a ministry of gender, we've gone out to sense time, you know, working with the UN um, uh, family and other NGOs and civil society. We have embarked on a, you know, a serious campaign to ensure that we sense time um, everybody on the importance of education and ending child marriage. And it is from that background that our president uh, is a champion, you know, of uh, ending child marriage in Africa you know, awarded to him by the African uh, Union because we have strengthened and we are still doing a lot at Zambia to ensure that we end child marriage. Okay. Another thing that's coming through, uh, Honorable Minister, from uh, messages is the issue of how the children themselves are saying uh, being regarded as a child at 21 is uh, stretching it a little bit. I think, uh, wow, what it is, I, I didn't say anything new. I've heard about comments, I've heard about those crimes. And uh, for me, I would really love a child to be, you know, described as a child up to 21, because really, a person who's 21 is still just a child. However, I want to clarify the, you know, the, the many comments and concerns that will come to say the international standards. And the, according to the constitution of Zambia, a child is described as anybody below the age of 18. And so what we are trying to do is to harmonize, to, uh, because uh, right now there's, uh, there's a mix-up in terms of who is a child. Uh, up to the level of uh, getting the registration, it's a registration part, it's 16 years. And the new constitution now talks about um, the child being up to the age of 18. And marriage without, uh, uh, with consent is at 18 years. And marriage without consent is at 21 years. The recommendations that have come is that for a, for a person to get married, the, the person should be at the age of 21 years old. So, uh, uh, we are talking about marriage at 21 years old. 
please tell us about the consultation process in uh, reference to uh, this revision for this act. Yes, we've already had the consultation process and uh, now the, the, the bill is sitting with the Ministry of Justice. So recommendations come through and uh, from the Ministry of Justice it will be moving to, to uh, Parliament. What have been some of the recommendations that uh, you've, you've received so far? Response? Um, well, the, the, the consultations were, were done over a, a, a long time. I don't know, maybe you'd have to be specific as to what exactly you are looking at. But what has been recommended is that a child, a person should get married at the age of 21. And when we say at the age of 21, we know that in Zambia we finish our education usually at the age of 17 to 18. And we are not saying that uh, grade 12 nowadays is not really somebody cannot even get a job as educated. We have so many degree holders, we have so many you know, certificate holders. We want to give an opportunity to this uh, girl child to go to school, you know, to advance their education in terms of uh, university, in terms of uh, college. And we believe that by the time that they are 21 years old, they would they have completed their university, they have completed even their education. I think what has come out more in this whole issue is the issue of sex. But what I want to, I want to clarify here is to say that you cannot separate sex from marriage. If a person is going to get married at the age of 21, Zambia is a Christian nation, and, ma and sex can only happen in a marriage. Anything, any sex that happens outside marriage is not recognized. And I wouldn't stand up as a minister and say, no, they should have sex at 18 years old and then get married at 21 years. No, because marriage is attached you know, to sex. Sex is not attached to marriage. You can only have legal sex when you are married. But these are just recommendations that are there, and that is what is there. At the moment, the law says that you can get married at 18 without, uh, uh, with consent from the parents, and then you can get married at 21 without consent. But the customer law, law also says that immediately after puberty, a child a person can get married. So these are the things that we want to reconcile, to harmonize, so that there's one law that is covering customary, uh, the traditional law, and you know, it, and, um, it, it covers everything. We know that even when they get married at the tradition, at, at, at the level of customary, we'll be able to, to say that this is wrong. So this is what this marriage act uh, is trying to achieve. Um, and then it has a, it's not law yet, but it's in the process. Yes, we are aware of that. And you talking about uh, customary re law uh, reminds me uh, of the guest that we had earlier on. She's a child activist, and um, I ask again on consultation because she brought in the issue of uh, the rural urban uh, discrepancy here because there's for the urban girls especially, they've got... Uh, school and activities that keep them busy up to 21. She brought in the aspect of the rural girl having to uh, do nothing. Some of them drop out of school I, I, at I, I na grade no 9. Excuse. For government, the patriotic trans government under the leadership of His Excellency President Edgar Chagwalungu covers everybody. We are not going to, you know, segregate. We are not going to discriminate against the people in the rural area. I am a, a girl from the rural area. And we are going to give education and we are trying to give education to everybody, whether in the rural or in upper, equally. We are going to give education to everybody, whether in the village or in town, equally. So that cannot be an excuse to say that we should allow people in the rural areas, you know, to ensure that to, to, to get married at an early age or they have nothing to do. That's not an excuse and that we are not going to accept as government because we are doing everything as government to ensure that we deliver, you know, good education service in the rural areas, even health services, roads and everything. We are sharing this equally. And I want to tell you that my constituency, Katanengwa, is a rural constituency. I go there every two weeks and we share equally when we share this development in parliament. And Katanengwa has received a number of, you know, schools. And uh, so that's not 
Okay. In your concluding remarks, um, please talk to um, the children out there who are thinking um, when they get to 18 or 20, they can no longer be referred to as children. The parents in the rural areas who are uh, marrying off their children at uh, an age where they just get to puberty and think they're ready to get married, as well as the general public who are skeptical about uh, the change of this act. Um, I, I just want to, to, to bring a comfort to everybody in the nation that the government means well. Patriotic France government means well. We want development. And we realize that we cannot develop this nation leaving someone behind. We want everybody carried uh, uh, together, forward, and involved in the development of the nation. Be it a girl child. And if we leave a girl child behind, and get married, then it means that we'll be drawing the, the nation backwards. And so that's why we are concentrating on ending child marriages so that each one can be independent, each one can have an income, and each one can contribute to the development of the nation. We mean well. And I want to clarify that the, the, the marriage bill is in the process, the marriage act is in the process, but it is coming. All right. Uh, and uh, we want to harmonize. All right. And we definitely, a child at the moment is described that anybody, uh, according to international standards, anybody under the age of 18, but the NRC says anybody under the age of 16. And the traditional also uh, describes the child differently. So. All right. Uh, we appreciate, Honorable Minister. Thank you so much for uh, uh, coming through. Um, aspects that are talking about how the uh, rural area has not been left out exactly and how um, this act will harmonize the urban as well as other rural aspects of uh, issues of this act being balanced exactly so this is actually a balanced act that but is meant to encompass everyone and uh, it's not segregating whether it's uh, from a village setup mm -hmm. or a town setup. And but it would be, it uh, it be very interesting, Kenneth, to see how um, it's going to the process of uh, actually just uh, convincing the children themselves who are exactly. below 18 to tell them that you are a child <laughs> until you are 21 and to see if their activities will also be in tandem with what <laughs> is being said. Exactly, Judy. That's a good point. Process. But I, I, I love the fact that, um, you know, she's explained why uh, this act uh, needs to be revised and obviously it's to uh, strengthen and also just curtail the issue of uh, early marriages. So I think it's a good thing all in all. And uh, debate also is healthy, uh, you know. Yeah, debate is healthy. It brings out uh, different opinions. All right. Talking about uh, traditional leaders being involved in uh, actually curbing early marriages and strengthening the message of early marriages. Earlier on, you talked about how Gao Undi has spoken about this, yeah. and he cuts across two different countries as well, which is Malawi and Mozambique. We have uh, Chief Lukwa from Malawi who talked about the issue of early marriages. Listen to this. No, I'm fine. Well, I can't even say welcome to Zambia because it's different to Amos. Yeah, definitely. Okay. We are one brother, yes, uh, one are. family. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, of course. Mm -hmm. Tell me about the week that you've been here. What have you experienced? Um, starting from Monday up today, I'm here. I think a lot of things which um, uh, I can say, which I, I've got a lot of experience, mainly for, as you know, this is a big event and we are doing a lot of things. So there is a lot of things which... Uh, uh, I can say we, we are we are uh, doing, doing here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What excites you most about the Kulamba ceremony um, as a chief coming from? Malawi? Yeah, Kulamba ceremony is a big event because we traditional leaders in three countries. That's where we report to Karonga Kawaunde as our king. So I think it is very important to we as traditional leaders or for for the chiefs to report back to Karonga Kawaunde what we are doing in our areas because Kalonga left us a lot of uh, years. I can say in Malawi, Kalonga left in Malawi about 1600 years ago. He left to Mozambique and from Mozambique up to here, 1921. So it's far away. Uh, so it is good to us as Cheva from Malawi and Mozambique to report back to Kalonga according what we are doing in our areas. Because it is Kalonga who left us, it is Kalonga who gave us that land so we need to report back. I can say this is a big parliament for the Jewas to report back to the 
to the king. What significance or what would you want the people who have uh, come to the Kulamba to go back with as they go back to their homes, to their different towns, be it the Chewas, be it the different people who have come to be part of the Kulamba? Uh, it is one way because uh, once we, if we gather together here, we share ideas, we share culture, some, we also we change the culture. We cannot continue with our old culture. Sometimes we change the culture. So when we come, come back, going back to our areas, then we, we know a lot of things and we can be able to share. Like this year, uh, the, there is a, th a theme there that we need uh, to, 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 to stop early marriages. So t for this year, all of all of chiefs, all of us, we are going back with that theme, and we are, we are going back there and tell our, our people that we must not allow young girls to go to the married. They must go. They must continue to school and not to, to get an area uh, to uh, uh, get. to get marriage as early as uh, as, as uh, they can. Okay. So that's one way which we are we are going to learn and we are going to pass on that message down there to our young girls and, and young boys to continue studying and they must not get married as the early uh, uh, teenagers. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. All right. So that is Chief Lukwa from Malawi talking about um, practices of uh, traditional practices that will actually uh, reduce the spread of HIV and AIDS and also issues of education for both the boy and the girl and talking about what we are talking about today which is uh, uh, related to what we're talking about early marriages how to just curb vices of early marriages you're watching morning live lifestyle we are talking about revision of the marriage act we've had guests come through we've also just uh, spoken to minister of gender via phone and she's also giving us her perspective and how this was arrived at and where it is at right now and uh, gifting getting on with views from different aspects of people who contribute to this issue we are going to be talking to plan zambia and this time mr lazarus Mwale is in studio with us good morning mr Mwale. welcome to morning live good morning it's always a pleasure to be here all right how's uh, plan international zambia? no plan we are okay we are busy with our work of course of mm -hmm. uh, advancing uh, equality and the, the rights of children uh, particularly focusing on girls Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Um, what are your thoughts uh, on our topic of discussion this morning? Well, it's a kind of a mixed thought, but um, we know that if you are going to address child marriage, definitely you have to look at the legal environment in the country. Uh, at a minimum, you must be able to have a law that set 18 and above. 18 and above mm -hmm. as the minimum age for marriage and that is uh, a global standard however just having a legal provision itself is not sufficient it's not enough we've got to look at other factors that are driving child marriage and um, even if you set the minimum age at 19 20 21 or 18 it doesn't mean in every environment, in every circumstances, that children are going to sit and wait if they have nothing to do until they reach that age for them to get married. So the reality is that we have to address other factors that are perpetuating um, child marriage. And uh, immediately what comes into my mind is the access to education in Zambia. Currently we have approximately 8,800 primary schools versus about 8,832 secondary schools. So 8,000 versus 800. So where do the children go from primary school when they fail to access secondary education? Basically, they stay back home for various reasons. Okay, and those that are staying home, <coughs> mainly in the rural areas, are they going to sit back and wait until they reach that age for them to get married? Definitely, that is a difficult situation 
they'll opt for marriage as an alternative because they cannot access education for various reasons. So we do have these mm -hmm. challenges at the moment that even if we put in a law which sets the minimum age for marriage, still more we have a mammoth task to address some of the driving factors. Okay. Apart from that, we need to make sure that we educate families and children on issues of sexuality. And here we are glad that um, last week, I think there was a pronouncement from the Minister of Health that government now um, is going to ensure that in every health facility, there is a youth-friendly corner, so to say, where young people can access information as well as um, access adolescent sexual product health services. Mm -hmm. And that is in a bid to reduce teenage pregnancy. That is a very welcome move. Young people need to have this information on sexuality so that they can prevent themselves from falling pregnant at a young age. Because we have seen that teenage pregnancy is also one of the key driving factors <coughs> of, of child marriage. So we've got to address a lot of issues, traditional norms, for instance, mm -hmm. where from the previous discussions I've alluded to the fact that traditionally when um, a girl becomes, be, becomes of age, they reach puberty, they are considered an adult and they can get married, that is fine. So we've got to address those factors to say it is not fine. We've got to come out of those traditional practices and allow these children to access education like the Honorable Minister is saying, okay? They, they get independent. They've, they've got some sort of income and they've got the capacity and the knowledge to decide who to marry and when they are going to marry and when they are going to have children. And that way we are going to have a productive country. All right, so from your talk, I get a feeling that for you, just coming up with the age is not really enough. But what we need to do is basically empower the, these children with information. Exactly. The law in itself is not going to be our absolute answer at all. We have to address other factors. For instance, even raising awareness in communities, because there are some communities who don't realize or believe or buy into the idea that what they are practicing is wrong and it is detrimental and it is dragging the development of the country. So we've got to raise awareness in communities through various ways. For example, mm -hmm. there, there are artists this week who have arranged a music festival just on child marriage. Okay, our Goodwill Ambassadors, Maureen Eland and Chris Aka, have arranged the Kama <laughs> Music Festival where they have mopped out artists across the country to orient them on, on child marriage and then they should sing songs on child marriage. So there's such kind of initiatives which create awareness in communities in an innovative manner so that people get to know it and they get to stop this behavior because it's also a behavioral issue to some extent. I like, I like the way of, uh, you know, the way of communicating to these children, like you said, uh, the artists that will come up, stage a show and sing, because obviously music is closer to a lot of uh, children's heart and uh, it's a good way of communicating. But let's talk about the world is developing really fast. What would you say or how would you differ differentiate a child of today and a child of back then? Well, we are in the information era now and basically what it means is that we are able to access information faster, um, spontaneous, instantly. And of course, since we are, we are using now digital uh, technology uh, in the schools, you know, we are, we are now teaching our children um, IT, it's important that children <coughs> equally have access to some of these um, uh, platforms that we are using as a world to access information. However, we need obviously to, to guard against what kind of information children access in the process. Um, and we cannot sit back and say, well, children cannot know about issues of sexuality. They are meant for people in marriage or they are meant for adults. We've got to tell them about this information well enough so that they are aware of the dangers that they face. 
if they indulge in sexual activities, uh, if they indulge in, in, in dangerous or risk behaviors, drug abuse, alcohol abuse. Mm -hmm. So this information has to be made available to the young people in a child-friendly way, whereby they can easily understand it, they can easily share it, and um, they can know where to go. For instance, if they are abused, or, or someone is, uh, is enticing them into doing something that is wrong. So we've got to equip our children <coughs> with this information. Parents, we've got to talk to our children about issues of sexuality, okay? Because that's how we're going to address these vices such as child marriage and teenage pregnancy, and be able to guide our young people through their journey of life. All right, now when you're working with uh, children, what have you discovered is the major cause of uh, early marriage? Well, um, there, are, there are several, like, like I pointed out, but from the young people point of view, we've got stories in communities where children themselves are saying, well, I didn't know that if I indulge in sexual activities, I would get pregnant, okay? We've got, uh, we've met uh, boys who are also affected by child marriage. By the way, it's not only girls who are affected by this vice. Even boys, they are, their dreams are shattered, you know. There are boys who, when they impregnate a girl, they are under the age of 18, and then they are, they are told, you just have to marry this girl. So they will come off their education path and they take up this young wife, who equally is supposed to be in a classroom. But instead, you put them in the matrimonial bedroom. So they are forced in this kind of marriages. So boys and girls are affected equally. And from what we get uh, when we meet these young people, they like information. They like alternatives. They like uh, access to education, quality education, that is going to be uh, motivating enough for them to learn, to remain in school, and not when they go to school because the quality is low, there are no textbooks, there are so many in class, they are, they are crowded, and then they fail. So they don't get motivated to go back to school because they have failed. But if we increase the quality of, of education, then the children, they get good marks, you know, they pass, they get motivated to continue with, with their with, with education. So these are the stories that we are getting from right. the communities. And earlier on you talked of uh, tradition and some cultural practices. Let's understand what influence these have uh, regards child marriages. Well, um, culture is, is what it defines who we are <laughs> as a people and, and the, the traditional practice that we've been you know, adhering to since time immemorial is what makes us. That's what our parents went through and we also want to pass it on to the next generation. But obviously some of it we are now realizing it's not helping us. Instead, it's killing us, it's dragging us behind. And um, there are cultural practices which, for instance, uh, consider a, a girl child when she has become of age to be an adult, and then you take them through initiation where you teach them all the stuff that is meant for a married person. For instance, you are telling them how they can please a man in bed, okay? And they tend to practice that immediately after the initiation, before they are ready for marriage, and then they fall pregnant. And as a result of the pregnancy, the parents, to cover up the shame, they push them and force them to marry, okay? So these are some of the practices that are prevalent in our country, most especially in, in Eastern religion. But we are happy that traditional leaders have realized this and the, they are now becoming the champions of change in modifying these cultural practices. You will be uh, delighted to learn that in Eastern province, the Gawa, uh, Gawa Undi, actually allowed that the Chinamwari initiation ceremony be revised, okay, to discard sex education um, and just concentrate on hygiene, on how girls can prevent uh, themselves from you know, getting pregnant and indulging sexual activities until they are married and respect to adults, for instance. And they went further to, to allow that we, we document the curriculum, which all the traditional initiators should use when they are initiating girls. 
so that we do not have a situation where when these girls come out of this initiation, they are desirous of, of, of testing sexual activity, but rather they concentrate on school and how they can keep themselves clean. So oh. there is positive, uh, there are positive developments regarding changes in, in the cultural practices and norms. All right, and finally, uh, what then are the effects uh, that will come with this revision of uh, the Marriage Act? Well, what, what legislation tends to do is that it, uh, it, it is also a way of um, a, a social behavioral change mechanism. Because when you realize that the government doesn't allow a person below <coughs> this age to get married, and if you are found wanting, then you'll be arrested. So that tends to deter would-be offenders because the government is more or less like telling you that if you do this, I'll punish you. So someone will stay back and say, no, 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 I don't want to be punished. So then people change their behavior. That is number one. Number two, we have to obviously realize that it's not going to be the answer in itself. It has to be accompanied by all these other factors that our area alluded to. So the law is good. Yes, it must be well disseminated, it must be enforced, most importantly, because if you just have it and it's not enforced, it's not going to, um, to achieve its purpose. So this is a, is, 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 a right step in, is a right step in the right direction, and in, all we have to do is agree as a country, like you are saying there are debates and, and so on, which, which is healthy, and I'm sure at some point we'll come to the conclusion and pick on one, one thing to run with. All right. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much, Mr. Mare, for making time coming through on Morning Live this morning. Thank you. All right, Judy, yeah, a lot of issues. Uh, I like the fact uh, that what is mentioned to say the law is not an absolute answer, but instead we need to raise awareness yeah. among us, these children. We need to empower them with knowledge on the dangers of early marriages then, uh, you know, to supplement the law. Uh, what has come out, Kenneth, from most of our guests who sat here mm -hmm. is firstly the issue of, yes, the act will do good, yes, the act will not do good. So there's a mixed feeling, there's a yes and no answer, and then also uh, issues of the causes of wanting to change this exactly. act should be looked into seriously. The ripple effect as well, it can go left, it can go right. So uh, I'm actually glad that it's still a bill and it's being discussed yes, and, and it's being, being tabled discussed. and a lot of issues are coming out. Yeah, so you too can be part of this show and uh, you can let us know on what you think this morning on our topic of discussion by just making sure you go to our Facebook page, which is TV2Zambia. Like the page if you haven't liked the page and then uh, you can post your thoughts regards our topic of discussion. Yeah. We'll be more than glad, we've uh, read some of them, but we'll be more than glad to get enough feedback and we'll be able to actually read it. But right now it's time to get inspired and let's get inspired in our inspirational minutes. Welcome back. Uh, <coughs> this is Morning Live Lifestyle, and this morning we are looking at the revision of the Marriage Act uh, following the recent pronouncement by uh, the Minister of Gender, Victoria Kalima. And uh, yes, um, 
a lot of concerns, obviously, around this topic, and uh, that, that is why this morning we brought uh, a number of guests to just help us with the dynamics of the topics and a lot of issues, obviously, coming out. But we are still going on uh, with the program, Judy, and we still have one guest that we have to engage uh, before we can actually leave. Uh, yes, Kenneth, and a lot of uh, people have talked about the uh, rural areas, the traditional leaders, because most mm -hmm. of the time the people who are engaging in uh, early marriages, the people who are engaging in these activities that have come out on the show today are from the rural setup of our country. And exactly. we are glad that uh, Chief Kaputa is on standby via phone, and uh, you'll be chatting with him uh, just in a short while to give mm -hmm. us the perspective from the traditional aspect. Yes, exactly. Um, so we are getting straight into the interview. Um, good uh, morning, Chief. Hello, good morning to you. Hello, good morning. Hello, good morning. All right, it seems we're still getting ready, um, getting to, uh, waiting to connect uh, with the chief. But we are still moving on. And uh, remember that you can be part of the program uh, by making sure that you send your messages uh, to our Facebook page. And also still coming up, sports. I think uh, the weekend had a lot of issues to do with boxing. So uh, Jason will be coming your way and just bringing you up to speed with regards uh, sports. But let's see if we can uh, connect right now. Good morning to you, Chief. Good morning. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Uh, how's the morning? The morning is fine, thanks. All right. So this morning we are looking at the revision of the Marriage Act and would like to start by getting your thoughts regards our topic of discussion this morning. Okay. Uh, what, I, what I would say about that is that I think it's a progressive thing to do right now, mm -hmm. the, the revision of, of the Marriage Act, because for all well, I know, I think we've had this act uh, from the beginning of uh, the last century. It's, it's almost about 100 years old and it's never been uh, reviewed. It has, it has had uh, a number of amendments. But in the main, it remained the way it was. Now, you know, the issue of the marriage act to me is very important because it addresses one of the most uh, important institutions of mankind because it establishes family. Marriage establishes family. And family, as we know it, is the best unit of, uh, of, of government. <coughs> For me, it's a center of meaning. All these norms that we're talking about, we, we learn all these uh, in, the, in the family setup. That's where we learn to coexist. That is where we learn to love uh, one another. And that's where we learn all the other you know, principles of life. All right. Therefore, for me, marriage must be guided by an act uh, that shall best be changing times, but best on the biblical terms and, and the standards, because marriage was firstly instituted by God. Okay. That's All right. So um, how often do you witness uh, underage uh, girls being married off uh, in your chiefdom? Well, uh, it's, it's quite regular. You know, the problem uh, is, is very common. And uh, we're trying uh, by every means to try and control it uh, through holding of meetings with parents, through holding of discussions on our community radio. It's quite rampant where you find girls as young as 14 years getting into marriage, you know, getting out of school and being forced to go into marriage. Mm -hmm. and sometimes the reasons given by parents is that, you know, these girls are not intelligent enough to stay in school. Other reasons are that, you know, parents are looking for money, you know, to, you know, for, for, for their livelihood. So the problem is, is quite common, even in, in my chiefdom in Kaput. All right. I'm interested also to know about uh, 
guys, when it comes to guys, is it the same? Do they marry at a very tender age as well? Yes, the, the problem is usually the same with the boys. Because, you see, like I think the previous uh, speaker was saying, we do have a number, a good number of boys who are doing nothing in the villages. And uh, the next thing you see them do is to get married. That's all. Okay. All right. And um, how do you feel when you witness young people, uh, you know, getting married at a very, very young age? It, it's very disappointing, really. You know, as a, as a father, I have my own daughters and I have my own boys. And, and really, uh, when I look at some of these girls and boys, I would, I would not want them to marry at the age that they do. But because the problem is there, you know, uh, they find themselves getting into it. It's not a good thing at all. Okay. All right. And uh, what is on the table, obviously, is the issue of a child at 21 years old. Uh, and there are some concerns. Uh, there are some people that feel 21 is a bit overstretched. What would be your reaction to that? Mm. I think for me, uh, 21 years of age would be the best age for anyone to get into marriage. You know, we're talking about the issue of being mature, you know, and marriage takes a mature person to get into it. And I feel, you know, at 16, 18, uh, a person would still not be considered to be to have learned uh, a lot to be considered to be mature and be able to run a home. Personally, uh, 21 years of age would be the right age for a, a person to get into marriage. Okay. And how will this revision of the Marriage Act work against culture and uh, certain uh, traditional practices? Sorry, can you come again? I'm saying this going 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 with this revision of the Marriage Act. How will it, uh, you know, work against uh, certain traditional practices that uh, we have and cultural practices? I, I would want to believe that uh, you know the the authorities that be will, will take into account uh, to bring on board uh, every stakeholder and including even uh, some of us uh, royal highnesses, uh, to be able to put up uh, a good act, you know, that will be able to guide us, you know, in this area of marriage. Uh, it has to take everyone on board, you know, to, to come up with a very good act, a very vibrant and, and modern act to guide us in this area of marriage. Okay. Uh, Chief Caputa, I'd like to say thank you so much for uh, making time for us the, uh, this morning on Morning Life. Thank, thank you so much. All right. So there you have it. I was talking to a traditional leader, and uh, that was Chief Caputa uh, on phone, just also adding his voice regarding our topic of discussion this morning, Judy. Uh, yes, Kenneth, the Tawa people have been represented. Uh, Luapula province, they are coming through with uh, issues of what we are talking about today. Uh, very fruitful discussion indeed. You mm -hmm. are watching Morning Live and we are getting closer to sports or have we even reached the junction for sports? We have Jason Dube on standby to give us, um, uh, of course, the analysis, what's going on, update us and what we're supposed to expect in this world of sports. Let's just get into sports.
Good morning. It's time for Morning Live Sports. Thank you so much for staying on. Your season already in the studio. Good morning to you. Uh, good morning, Jason. Uh, good, good morning, viewers. You. Thank was you. your weekend and just Monday after? Monday, Tuesday was, uh, yeah, it was yeah. fantastic. Uh, just um, reading the reports about the Zambia national team and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, getting abreast with what is going on. I think mm -hmm. we're happy that we seem to have a full house mm -hmm. in terms of the players that have reported for camp and uh, we're ready to go. I think uh, come Saturday, Zambia should be able to roll over the uh, Nigerians. Mm. Forget about uh, Mares. Yeah, Forget so. about Sliman. Mm. This is Zambia. This is the Chipolopolo and we just have to go. All right, we shall be getting uh, the latest and as far as the Chipolo Polo is concerned from yachts a little bit later. For now, though, let's open up uh, in our sports uh, in our segment looking at uh, the uh, fixtures that are available for this weekend. As far as basketball is concerned, we're playing round 13 and there's plenty of action that is expected around. And tell you what, already the table is taking shape. We know who's on top. Buffalo's B taking on uh, Capital Raiders. Hot Space up against LCC Lutresses. Green Buffalo's take on, taking on Matt Ma uh, Magic Sparks, they're on top of the table, by the Indeed, way. Indeed, GBFC yeah. is on, uh, on top. Magic Sparks. I mean, Magic Sparks is on top of the table, and uh, again, it's G G uh, Green Buffaloes. I think it will be a tough game. So we are wait and see which one will be able to win this game. But I can assure you that Magic is a team. Mm. So Magic uh, Sparks is still on top of the table as of week 12. Entropy Bulls will be up against Napsa Harry Kent's. Unza Pacers are up against the Hawks and the Unza Pacers are second as far as the Super League is concerned. Matero Magic is commanding the table and uh, very competitive in the way um, this round of fixtures looks like. Well, again, we cannot uh, say for certain that mm. um, 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 Amateur Magic will be, will be there for, 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 <laughs> for, for, for all. We want to think that uh, Unza Pesas, like you know, the uh, champions, champion material, they, they, are different, uh, they were champions a few years ago. And mm. to me, I think uh, they still have what it takes for them to be able to be at the summit of uh, mm. the basketball log. So watch out for you know, Buffalo's up against Matero Magic. So Matero Magic are commanding the Super League table as far as the uh, male category is uh, concerned. Heroes play United will be up against LCC Lutez. Munali Sands, they were a force to reckon with in the last two seasons, but they're not showing those signs as of this season. We don't know for sure what has happened yeah. to them. I think uh, it's a question of uh, uh, the form having dipped, but uh, they can be able to pick up in the number of games that are still mm. remaining, and they can be able to be where they're supposed to be. Watch out for Ilanda hits. They're up against the Huskies. And uh, Zika's Blazers will take on Junior Luthers. We expect that those fixtures will produce somewhat an interesting weekend as we anticipate round 13 of basketball uh, this weekend. So you do well to ensure that you keep yourself abreast of what is happening. Now, Yachts, let's move on and talk <coughs> about the Barclays Cup draws. They were conducted yesterday at Pomozi. I mean, 8.30, the house was already packed. Interesting draws that eventually came out. Look at those fixtures. Indeed, they are world mouth, um, a mouth watering uh, draws because if you look at Zanako versus Power Dynamos, it's a game to watch. Naps are up against the Buffaloes. Again, that's a tough, uh, tough game. But uh, there are other teams like uh, National Assembly versus, uh, you know, uh, Kawata Youth. Kawa that, Youth. Kawa Youth. Mm -hmm. I think uh, it's a game that National Assembly should be able to win. By the way, National Assembly are 20 points, you know, in Division 1. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. they should be heading to the Premier Division this time around. Mm -hmm. They've uh, tried, they've been knocking for uh, many years, but uh, now it appears that it's a time that they should be able to come to the uh, Premier Division. Lusaka Dynamos also is up against uh the winner, because uh, the, the winner, yeah, the, the winner, the winner between Assembly and Kawa will and Kawa play Youth. Lusaka Dynamos, well, uh, which is a very interesting feature. Very, very so interesting. Most likely, like you put it, it might be Assembly playing Lusaka, Lusaka Dynamos, Dynamos the or it could be Kawa Youth. I, and I, then, yeah. I want to think that National Assembly should be able to play Lusaka Dynamos in that game, because if, for honesty, sp honesty speaking, National Assembly is playing well. The Parliamentarians are playing a very good game. Mm. Yeah. Now, look out for Monze Swallows, the new Monze Swallows, up against the Kitwe United. You know that Kitwe United is from the other side in terms of <laughs> zones. Uh, so Ki Monza, new Monza Swallows will take on Kitwe United and the winner there will play we'll Zesco United, Zesco who are the United. defending champions. And talking about defending champions, this was in 2016. The Republican president was there and 
they were in high spirit, Tesco United, the, uh, during this period. Well, they were the champions and they were being, you know, adorned and decorated by His Excellency the mm. President, which is very good. I think that they want to carry on from where they left and uh, uh, wh wh whichever team they'll be able to play could be Monza Swallows uh, or, or Quito United. Mm. I think uh, Zesco United should be able to play well, win that game and be able to move into the next stage of the game. Mm. But that said, I think... Uh, What's different about Zesco United this time around as they play the Barclays Cup? We know for a fact that last season, they were in the <coughs> Champions League. They were playing in the semi-finals, but this time around they're in the Confed Cup, and there's still much more to look out for in this Cisco side. Well, yes, it's a good team. It's playing well, but sometimes it's not. It's mm. not. It's not as lethal as it was, you know, during the time of Chicken George or the previous season. Uh, they are not uh, that, you know, Zesco United that we used to know. But uh, mm. in a cup game, I think we all know that they are good campaigners and uh, they can be able to beat any team that they meet. Mm. Yeah. So they will continue. Jacob Banda of late, he has been sidelined in as far as... Uh, oh, there's a Rwandi, two, Rwandi, he's, 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 Rwandi yes. is a goalkeeper that has come in two go. He's taken over the mantle <laughs> in Division 1. And by the way, Jacob was the captain of Zesco United. Mm. But all of a sudden now, we do see Kondon Mtonga uh, carrying the uh, captaincy. Mm. And that, uh, that said, I think uh, it's up to Jacob to be able to push up his uh, form, stretch himself. Then he can be able to reclaim his position. But you need to give kudos to the uh, Rwandese goalkeeper. Mm. He's doing well. I saw him over the weekend on Sunday when they played in that new new draw. I think he's good. Mm. Yeah. So in this Zesco setup, obviously, uh, some names are not uh, with the team. For instance, Kletus Chota Chama, uh, Edris Mbombo, I can see his face from here, not part of the squad. You can also talk of Mwelom Peta, who is not also you know, having game time at, the, at Zesco United. But uh, naturally, you, you need to understand that uh, teams do uh, mm. bring in other players to try and cement a, a, a position or to try and cement uh, you know, the, uh, the team. So it, uh, it's natural that uh, there's a gradual uh, uh, phase of others coming in and others, you know, are still cementing their positions. So look out for the Barclays Cup and obviously the draws have been conducted already. We know how, you know, which team is playing who in as far as the, uh, you know, 2017 edition is concerned. Defending champions Zesco United are worth the opponents between New Mons as well as and the Quito United. All those fixtures will be played as double headers. So as much as we're concerned, we're looking forward for those, uh, you know, fixtures to start uh, in as far as game time is concerned. They'll all be played in the month of September and obviously then we'll know how the roadmap will be off this stage into the next stage of the 2017 edition. Now, there's plenty of football to look out for today. It's Wednesday in the first MTN Super League. Yards. Zanako is playing. You need those uh, teams that uh, are trying to catch up, that were on international, you know, in, uh, international duty, are now coming back to be able to fulfill their six, uh, fixtures. Uh, one is uh, Zanaco and Zesco mm. United. The two uh, <coughs> should be able to uh, play their games. If they win their games, then it means that uh, we should have a clog in terms of the uh, upper, upper, upper echelon of the MTN League. Mm. But that said, I think it's up to these teams to be able to win their game. Mm. Zanaco winning their games, Zesco United winning their games. But for now, we just have to understand that uh, the law. Uh, doesn't have a permanent team that is on top. Sitting on top. Yeah. Sitting on top. This week you'll find Lusaka Dynamos, the other week Napsa, the other week you'll find the Power Dynamos, just like that. But mm. uh, for now, it's Power Dynamos that is in top. So look forward for this weekend's fixture. But Zanako will start off their campaign with a rescheduled fixture this Wednesday. They are up against Lusaka Dynamos today. So let's wait and see what kind of result will be posted in there. Uh, thereafter, they need to travel to the Copper Belt at the Inkana Stadium where they'll be able to play uh, in Inkana Football Club. Uh, and as far as the MTN is concerned, Butecon, uh, rather, uh, Butecon will be at home at the Trade Fair Grounds up against the Forest Rangers. That's a dollar derby. If you ask me about it, it's a lo local derby. Uh, Buffaloes will take on Napsa Stars, another Lusaka derby. Zesco United will take on City of Lusaka. That game, actually, the fixture is showing that that game is uh, postponed. And, uh, Red Arrows will take on Nkwazi. Green Eagles will take on Power Dynamos. Nchanga Rangers will be up against the Red, uh, Lumona Radiant. Uh, Mufira Wonders will take on Lusaka Dynamos, who are playing uh, in midweek. Um, and obviously, Nakambala up against Nakonde. Concola Blades will take on Cabo Warriors. Well, we hope that we are seeing a resurgence of a couple of warriors in that they won their game last weekend against the Mighty Fuller Wanderers. Can uh, we bank on that seriously? Yeah, well, we should be able to uh, think that it's uh, they are coming out of the um, the shell where they were, where they were not getting wins. Now that they should be buried by that win. Mm.
So we expect that there will be plenty of football to look out for in the FAS MTN Super League. But let's now focus our attention on the World Cup, you know, qualifiers for Russia 2018. It's upon us this weekend, interesting fixtures to look out for. Let's have a look at some selected fixtures. Obviously, Zambia takes on Algeria. It's a big talking point. We shall be talking about that with Yotz a little bit later. Watch out for Gabon up against Ivory Coast, which is Cote d'Ivoire. Uh, Senegal taking on Burkina Faso. Spain, Italy, Hungary up against Portugal. Cameroon take on Nigeria. That's a crack of a game. It, it is a crack of a yeah. game indeed. Mm. England, Slovakia, Germany, Norway. Yotz, let's pick uh, Cameroon, Nigeria, as well as Spain, Italy, uh, in, in, in as far as uh, looking at uh, our analysis. Is, uh, Cameroon versus Nigeria, you need to understand that Nigeria is on top. We are in the same group, uh, Zambia and, uh, and Algeria, and Nigeria is uh, on six points. They won the opening two games. They beat mm. Zambia 2-1, and they were able to beat Algeria in that game. So now they're up against a Cameroon side in whose fixture. The last game Cameroon was able to play Zambia, and we ended up uh, drawing in that game 1-1. So we're talking of a Cameroon that is also needing a win because that game which uh, you know play they played against Zambia it was at home they were able to draw so they are at home again against Nigeria so it's a game that uh, Cameroon needs to win if they do have any ambitions of uh, traveling to Russia 2018 let's talk about Zambia now though they are playing Algeria this weekend we've seen what uh, the players that have been called into camp and it looks like it looks set Indeed, we look set. I think we need to be honest with ourselves. Uh, Coach Wada Wada scored a good side combined with the uh, under-20 heroes uh, that should be able to compete for places against the senior, the old order or the old guard of the senior Zambia national team. I want to think that that's a good thing that the coach has done. And uh, this should be able to create competition between and among us, uh, you know, the players. That said, I think uh, come Saturday, the coach should have a headache in terms of coming up with the first 11 that should be able to Why to do you anticipate, uh, you know, headache in as far as selecting the Final well, the truth of the matter, Jason, is uh, the under-17 boys are also playing well. If you talk of Fashion Sakala, he's getting goals for his product mm -hmm. to a Moscow club. If you talk of Patson Daka, he's also in Salzburg, he's getting goals for his club. Imano Banda is also playing. So those are the boys that are informed. Mm -hmm. They are knocking at the door of the, Zambia, of the senior Zambia national team. And indeed, we have the Zambia national team in whose players are also playing well. Uh, those that are playing mm -hmm. professional football <coughs> or those that are, are, are locally are not playing the local, local game. So to me, I think that's where the headache will be able to come. Uh, so come there's through. pressure in as far as choosing who who will start. Will uh, be with in the, the first team, yeah. eleven that will be able to, uh, to to come out of the uh, of the of the dugout of the tunnel on Saturday. But uh, we. As fans, we're looking forward to a good, you know, starting lineup mm. that should be able to give us goals. Uh, if you talk of formation, four four two is something that we need to look at. Mm. That uh, should but most, help us. Most teams have changed. They, 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 yeah, they, they, a lot they, of they, they play more four four three for you know for formation now. It's they, more they, attacking. They're, lot. They, they're quicker in terms of uh, cover, <coughs> dropping the, the two wingers to change the formation to four four two. Yeah, just on the lot of formations that the coaches would want to, to employ on a given day. You can talk of a 3-5-2, uh, where you try to put more players into the midfield, but uh, for obvious reasons, when we're playing at home, what's the point of uh, uh, bulking the midfield? All we want are goals. If we can be able to have, uh, you know, two players in front, four in the middle, four in defense, then that does help us in terms of... So why of not take a 4-3-3 three, three if you want to be attack-minded? If Well, in, in, again, if you take or talk of 4-3-3, three, three, it means that uh, you've opened up the midfield. If the ball, you know, comes out from the strife, from the third, third, the third spot, it comes into the midfield. You don't have a man. You the, need quicker. You need quicker wingers. That's all. Do we have the players that are quicker to yes, be able to are, draw back? There are plenty of them. Oh no, plenty <laughs> of them. Plenty of them. Uh, let's quickly. We, you know, it could be suicidal, you know, on our part. We are pressed for time, but let's let's conclude. I mean, uh, Chile have included Arsenal striker Alexis, uh, you know, Sanchez in their squad for the upcoming World Cup qualifier against, uh, you know, Paraguay and Bolivia, and. Uh, Sanchez on the other side, Arsenal have rejected a 50 million pound bid from Premier League rivals Manchester City uh, for the forward. Uh, honestly speaking, I think Arsenal are not doing themselves a favor in terms of rejecting. If a player doesn't have the heart or yeah. the, he, he is not willing to play for the team, why not let him go? He, you are better off, you know, ripping off something from that player as opposed to have a player that uh, you have and is not putting in his mm. maximum is 100%. So, mm. uh, a player, if, you know, the heart is not there, just leave him, let him go. Mm. Recoup the money from what, uh, you know, you bought him for and be able to buy other players that will be able to come well, who have seems, the heart to play for the team. Arsene Wenger wants... Uh, them to like switch swap <coughs> with uh, he wants a swap deal with uh, Raheem Sterling. The uh, latest, the latest, and uh, the latest Pep doesn't want that, he wants an outright purchase. 
The latest that is coming out of uh, you know Emirates is that uh, they don't want any swap. They don't want to sell Alex Sanchez. All they want is the player to be able to stay, mm. which is not good enough. The, what they fail to understand is the player hasn't signed another contract, meaning and implying that come 2018, he will be able to go for free, for mm. free. Mm. So why not get something now, 50, 50 million dollars, which will be able to help 50 you? 50 million pounds, pounds, which will be able to help yeah. you, as opposed to a situation where the player will just be able to walk out the gates of em Emirates, mm. free of well, charge. Well, we have to go. Big thanks for finding time to be with us on the show this morning. But we're looking forward to uh, having Yachts on Friday because Friday will be the big day, and as far as the 2018 Russia qualifiers are concerned, and Zambia playing on a Saturday, and the Fazi Mtn Super League playing on a Sunday, plus many more action to look out for in the sporting area. For now though, stay watching TV to the past of television. When it comes to sports, uh, you can easily say, hey, easier said than done. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And that is your sports for this morning. Thank you so much, Jason and Yachts, for, you know, keeping us abreast with what is happening in the world of sports. Uh, otherwise, we've been looking at uh, the revision of the Elimine Marriage Act, Act uh, which actually describes a child uh, as any person below the age of 21, as opposed to the earlier one, which uh, described the child as a person below the age of 16. Yes. A lot of issues, a lot of concerns. A lot of yeses and noes coming through there. We've had mm. legal representation, traditional representation, uh, policy, government representation, and of course, uh, organizations involved in this, and a child activist. Thank you so much for having stayed with us from Kenneth and myself. On behalf of the entire production crew for Morning Live, we thank you for having stayed with us. Join us again on Friday for more uh, Morning Live issues. Thank you so much. Thank you.